Full moons are times of release. New moons are times for calling in the new, starting new projects. But with this full moon, this full moon is a super moon. And the super moon is when the moon is closest to the earth. And we usually have a few, usually like three super moons in a year. Sometimes there are four. Uh, this one in particular, this super pink moon, pink super moon, um, is the one where the earth is closest to the moon. The moon is closest to the earth. And so it's powerful. Uh, full moons are also times of, they bring up great emotion. And so if you're feeling emotional, um, it could be, you know, related to the full moon. You hear about people kind of going wild on the full moon or the werewolves coming out on the full moon. Well, that's all related. It brings up a lot of emotion. And this moon, uh, this pink super moon in Libra, the astrological sign Libra, which is my sign and my sun sign and my rising sign, uh, Libra is an air sign, and so when, you're, when you've got an air sign, you really want to balance it by grounding. You don't want to float off into the ethers. That's something that's always a challenge for me. I'm, I'm always up in the spiritual world, and I have to make an effort to ground because that balances out the air element. And so um, we'll be doing some grounding today. And Libra is also about balance and about relationships. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But to open up our circle, open up our ceremony, we'll go to the altar here. And I tried to keep the altar very simple for tonight. I wanted to share this with you so that you can see uh, how simple it is to build an altar. And um, on this altar, I honored the four directions and the four elements. And so uh, this is my east over here. And in the east, I've got stones in each direction that actually represent my dogs. And so I placed those in the four directions first, to the east, to the south, to the west, and to the north. And then for the elements, I have the fire here in the east. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna light the fire. In the east and we're going to welcome the east the east is the direction of spring it's the direction of the sunrise the east is the direction of the void the great unknown it's where we usually begin things begin projects so we light our fire in the east and we open this circle and then we travel to the south and in the south i have placed some earth the earth element goes with the south. The south is the direction of summer, a time when all things bloom. It's the middle of the day. It's the, the direction of the heart. And so you think of the earth, mother earth, you think of the heart. This is actually um, some sand, a combination from the banks of uh, Maganga in Rishikesh, India. and some uh, sand from Chimayo in New Mexico. And so we'll place that in the south. The south is also the container. And so as we honor and welcome the south to our circle, the earth to our circle, um, we'll also open the container. And this container of our circle spans the globe. We're all here together. So maybe take your arms out to the sides for a moment. Take a deep breath in, spread the fingers wide. Inhale deeply. And exhale and imagine that we're circling up and that someone is sitting next to you and the fingertips are lining up with yours, not quite touching. So this is about six feet, I think, on either side. And we can imagine our virtual social distancing circle. And yet we're still here, we're still connected. And this container is open. And so We'll call in the west, and the west is the direction of autumn, the direction of letting go and release, and the element of water. And when you think about water, you think about fluidity, you think about flexibility, letting go, releasing, you know, the water carries it away. So I've got 
a vessel here that is also from India that my aunt Mimi gave me and I love it and it's got some water in it and I actually um, I sang some a song into the water before I placed it on the altar so it's charged with good vibes and um, so we welcome the element of water we welcome the west we welcome the north and in the north I have a feather and this feather is an owl feather and so the north is the direction of winter, it's a direction of knowledge and wisdom, and it's a direction of vitality and power. So we welcome the north, and it's also the element of air, so the feather associates with the air. And so we welcome the element of air, very important right now. We have a smoky quartz, my smoky quartz Kalila is in the middle of the altar, and she is wonderful. Smoky quartz is wonderful for absorbing any negative energy. So. We've got that there to, as we release, the smoky quartz will take away any of that negative energy. The fire also is wonderful for, it's a good time on a full moon to make a fire. And sometimes if you have intentions of things you want to release, it's nice to write it down and actually physically burn it in the fire. I would do that in my wood stove, not here, but you know, make, your, make sure you're somewhere safe. But think about that. So we're calling in the directions. We've got the directions. We've got the elements. And then take your arms up to the sky. Look up. Reach up. And let's welcome Pachatata, Father Sky, to our circle. We welcome Father Sky. Ooh, how about that? <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, thunder. I got some storms in the area. So there's Father Sky coming into the circle with the thunder. We also welcome the moon, beautiful grandmother moon. Take your palms to the earth. Take a moment to welcome Pachamama, Mother Earth. Connect with the earth. And then come back to sitting. That comfortable seat, that connection with the sitting bones connecting with the earth. Send down roots into the earth, an energetic grounding cord, and ground yourself with Mother Earth. Connect with Mother Earth energetically and then send the roots out in all four directions. Take a deep breath in through the nose, lengthening through the spine. Exhale, bring the left palm to the heart center, the right palm over the top. Press into the heart and honor the sacred heart, the divine heart within each and every one of us. Feel your heartbeat and know that your heartbeat is connecting each and every one of us in this circle tonight. And it's connecting us with the earth, the heartbeat of the earth. We also call in the allies, the ancestors. And we say, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we call in our angels, welcome to the circle. And so our container is open. Aho. So, I'd like to just read something, and if you would, keep your eyes closed and just relax and breathe deeply, inhaling deeply through the nose and exhaling deeply through the nose, and eyes focused on that third eye point, closed and rolled up. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been. A place half remembered and half envisioned, we can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we answer, as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Woo! <laughs> Thunder. Community means strength. It joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter. A circle of healing. A circle of friends. Some place where we can be free. Take a deep breath. Breathing into the heart. Inhaling deeply, pressing into the heart. And as you exhale, let something go. And send light out from your heart. Ooh. 
We're not going to do a big yoga practice today. I usually do a bit of movement in yoga practice, but I did think uh, that for today, I'd like to do a breathwork practice. And we actually did it right at the tail end of the miracle breath. Uh, we did the miracle breath right at the end of the Kirtan Kriya meditation. So you might have caught that if you were just arriving. But I'd love for us all in this circle to join together for just about three minutes, three, four minutes of this breath. Um, it's called the miracle breath. I call it the miracle breath. And it's a wonderful breath for basically connecting earth, sky, and grounding, and also elevating. And so for this breath, it's a four-part square breath. Take your arms out to the sides, fingertips out to the sides. And if you can, touch the earth next to you. Close your eyes, roll them up. You're going to take a deep breath in through the nose. And as you do, sweep the palms up, upward, arms upward. Try to keep the arms nice and straight as you sweep them up through your aura, your energetic field. And bring them parallel with the palms facing one another. Drop the shoulders, shoulder blades. Reach up through the crown of the head. So you're inhaling as you sweep to a four count. Up here, you're gonna hold, hold the breath in for a four count. Then you're gonna press the palms together and come down the center line to the heart for a four count as you exhale. And then you're gonna draw the navel in to press the breath out and lower the chin to the chest, the head bows to the heart to a four count with the breath held out. So inhale, two, three, four, Reach with the breath held in, two, three, four. Exhale down the center line, two, three, four. Let the head bow to the heart. Hold the breath out for four, okay? So let's give it a try. It's great to um, incorporate a little movement, I believe, at the beginning of the circle. We wanna get the body moving, we wanna get the energy moving because the way that we heal, the way that we release, the way that we clear on this full moon or in you know any any healing um, we need to get the energy moving and so this is a wonderful way the breath is your most powerful tool to really get the energy moving in your body so take a deep breath in and exhale Take another deep inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale deeply. Take the fingertips out to the sides. Exhale fully. And let's begin. So inhale, turn the palms up. Two, three, four. And hold the breath in as you reach. Two, three, four. Exhale, palms down the center line. Three, four. Let the head bow to the heart. Two, three, four. Inhale and sweep. Hold the breath in and reach. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale down the center line. Head bows to heart. Hold the breath out. Draw the navel in. Inhale, sweep. And reach. Really fill yourself up with light. Feel it pouring in through the fingertips the crown of the head, filling up your heart, radiating out. Inhale, sweep, deep breath in through the nose, reach, two, three, four, your exhaling nose as you come down the center line, breath held out. Control. 
One more time. Reach. Exhale. Down. Take a deep breath into the heart. And exhale, light all around you. Beautiful. So that is a wonderful breath for calling in miracles. It's also a wonderful breath for bringing in light. Like I said, also from, for connecting the earth and the sky. And you are the conduit in between. You are the hollow bone through which that light is just flowing freely. And you're a clear channel. And so you allow everything to flow through. It's a wonderful breath too for calming. If you get to any point where you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, you can just do a couple minutes of that breath and it'll usually bring you right back into the heart space, which is where we want to be. So I'd like to just share a few things about this moon with you. Um, what we're going to work with today, and I like to always preface whatever I say with this. I feel like with, um, you know, working with moon energy or anything, any spiritual aspects, I'm sharing my perspective and I'm sharing things that I've learned in my travels and the different teachers that I've worked with, but, uh, you know, and also things that have come up with my intuition, but uh, you might have a totally different experience than me, and that's okay. I just want you to know that um, as I share, take what resonates with you and just leave the rest. No worries there whatsoever. So what's coming up for me and the different things that I've read about this, uh, this full moon it happens tonight at 10.35 p.m. Eastern. And uh, like I said, it's Libra, so it's about balance and it's about relationships. So on the side of balance, the idea of balance, right now I think that um, we're actually in, in my meditations this week, we've been talking a bit about balance. Um, this is a time when um, the world might feel a bit unbalanced to us. And... Um, the idea is for us to work to bring it back together into balance, to balance the collective energy, but we do that by balancing our own energy first. We work within, and then that ripples out into the collective. So in order to try to find the collective balance that's called for in this full moon, think about balancing yourself. And a couple of, I thought of uh, three different kind of pairs of, you know, kind of what you might look at as good and bad emotions, uh, things that might be coming up right now. And you can take a look at the balance between them and then you can take a look at how you're balancing these two things in your own life. So I wanted to take a look first off at the idea of love and fear. Where are you with love? Where are you with fear? Because fear and love are kind of balanced, and this is kind of the work of the heart. Where there is love, there is no fear. Where there is fear, there is no love. And so can you think about, or do you want to think about on this super moon, possibly letting go of the fear and calling in love? And I'm just going to give a few examples. And if you have your own intention in mind of what you want to release, that's totally cool. You can hang on to that. But think about trading your fear for love, filling the heart with love. The second um, idea that I was playing around with was the idea of trust versus doubt. And trust, I would say, is probably more of a function of the root chakra that's kind of more your grounding and, you know, bringing yourself into balance with your security, your stability, your foundation. So trust versus doubt. When we're in doubt, uh, you know, we're not trusting. And when we trust, there is no doubt. 
So think about that one too as a possible thing to work on as well. The third thing I wanted to throw out is the idea of calm versus anxiety. This is kind of associated, I would say, kind of with the mind. And so we're kind of bouncing from the heart to the root, to the head or the, the third eye somewhat, but really kind of more the monkey mind that can fluctuate between calm and anxiety. So can you trade your anxiety for calm? Where there is calm, there's no anxiety. Where there's anxiety, there's no calm. So the idea is to look at what we're faced with in the world right now and can we bring it into balance by coming into neutrality. If we can come into a place of neutrality, and I heard a quote the other day, react as if you have chosen it. React as if you have chosen it. Even though things that are going on right now are crazy, wild, unfamiliar, probably a little scary at times, if we can react as if we have chosen it, we can totally adopt a different perspective. We can take maybe a more neutral perspective and come into love over fear, trust over doubt, calm over anxiety, come into neutrality. Then we are in balance. So Libra, the scales, the balance, calls us to balance. So think about that with regard to our release today. And then I also wanted to touch on the idea of working with relationships. So the emotions that are coming up under this full moon, you might be feeling more on the balance side, stuff coming up that you want to balance. You might be feeling more on the relationship side. Maybe you've been emotional about that type of thing. And that's what you want to work on. Or finding balance in relationships. You can bring them together. So with relationships, um, what comes up around that, you know, Libra is, is big into relationships, big into balance, big into fairness, into justice. Um, when we think about our relationships, again, just like with balancing the collective, working on ourselves first, same thing with relationships. We work on ourself first, and then we can be in relationship with others. So think about your relationship with yourself and then start thinking about your relationships. This can either be relationships with family, with friends, with a romantic relationship, all different types of relationships. But I feel like at this time right now in the world, we're being definitely having an opportunity, which if we can look at it in this way, it's a rare gift when time and space is basically suspended, which is completely unusual from what we are used to. And obviously that's not the case for the essential workers, quote unquote, the frontline people, and let's please send them lots and lots of light if we are home and we are able to go into this and work with this right now because we are not in our busy, busy, busy daily lives, you know, we can send them some light. But if we are in this place of our lives and perhaps you're spending more time with your romantic partner or with your family or with, not with friends probably, but well, you might be holed up. I have my friend Annette in Chicago is holed up with friends through the, uh, through the quarantine. So yeah, you might be having that and I think we can take a good look at these relationships as we're kind of forced to do so because we're together more than we probably usually are. We usually probably distract ourselves. You know, is there an opportunity right now in relationships to have that deeper conversation with someone that you love? And can we take a look at a couple of things with regard to that? Can we look at our relationships from a perspective of compassion. Can we look at the other person from a perspective of acceptance? Can we look at them with appreciation or recognition? Maybe we sometimes take certain people for granted in our lives and maybe we now, you know, in these times that feel uncertain, can we open up and allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to express our unconditional love? And 
can we also come into a place of forgiveness? Because at the core of any relationship, you really, really need to come into forgiveness. Forgiveness of self, which makes us kind of happier and healthier as a person, able to be in relationship, but then forgiveness of others as well. So often we have little resentments that we hold on to. Sometimes we don't even realize we're holding on to them. They might be coming up a lot right now while you're quarantined together. All of a sudden you might be, you know, something, the straw might break the camel's back one day. Um, you might blow up at someone, you know, apparently for no reason from an old resentment. And if that's happening, think about can you go into a place of forgiveness? Can you go into a place of deep acceptance for this person and the idea of, in relationship, meeting this other person where they are, meet them where they are, and recognizing that the other person is you, and recognizing the people in your life who are mirrors, and the mirrors are the tough ones. You know, usually our family will mirror us. They know us better than anyone, and sometimes they're the, the, the habits or the things about the other person that become annoying or cause you to blow up. You know, take a look at that mirror and ask yourself, is this something that I'm really upset with in this person or is this something that I'm really aggravated with in myself? You know, because sometimes that's what it is. And so look at that mirror and what are these people here to teach us? Each and every one of our relationships, what are these people here to teach us? So that's kind of what I wanted to share about the Libra energy of this full moon tonight and uh, the idea of balance, neutrality. And on that one, you know, reacting as if you've chosen it balance and neutrality, or on the relationship side, meeting others where they are and recognizing that the other is you, seeing that mirror. So think about that and close your eyes if you will. Take a deep breath in, inhaling deeply through the nose, all the way up the spine, follow the breath from the base of the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, up the spine, up the neck, and out the crown of the head, reaching up toward the sky, lengthening the spine. Keep the palms down on the knees in a gesture of grounding. As you exhale, exhale through the mouth, let something go but keep the length in the spine, keep reaching up through the crown of the head. With that breath, feel yourself grounded. Pause with the breath held out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth, let something go. And feel yourself balanced. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth and release. Feel yourself centered. And just sit here with the eyes closed and rolled up in this comfortable seat. And I'm just gonna give you just about a minute in silence to just call up anything within you that might have come up in our talk about balance, about relationships, or anything that you brought to the circle tonight that you would like to release. Go ahead and call that up and don't overthink it. Don't think too hard if nothing comes up that's okay. It might come up later on and you can still release it later on. You can still release it in the morning. You'll still be in this super moon energy in the morning. It's happening overnight. But just see if you can call up something. Just 
something you want to release to this full moon, something maybe you're hanging on to with regard to a relationship, something that feels unbalanced that you want to let go of, maybe something in yourself or in another you, you want to forgive and that you want to let go of and just realize that when times are uncertain, we need each other more than ever. And if we're holding on to any resentments or any negativity with regard to you know, other people and or ourselves, um, you know, that's when the energy gets stuck. And when the energy gets stuck, that's when you're susceptible to dis-ease. It's uncomfortable, it's stuck, it's not moving, it stagnates, and dis-ease becomes disease. So we wanna keep the energy moving. So keep breathing deeply, thinking about what you would like to release. You could have a long list of what you would like to release, or you can, like I said, you can do it later, write it down, put it, burn it in the fire, but Gather up what you would like to release, and I'm just going to play the bowls for just a minute as we let go, as we release to the fire, anything you don't need. Just let it go. 